Alright everyone, since I can't travel at the moment, it is time for a bonus video. So here are eight more quirky things to see in Europe. Uh, because I think that's a better title than eight random bits of unseen footage that I've thrown together because I'm running out of material. And where better to start a quirky random list than the world's largest crossword puzzle, which can be found on the side of a tower block in the suburbs of Lviv, Ukraine. The clues are scattered around the city's landmarks and monuments, and the idea is that you hunt them down and then come back here to check your work after dark, when the answers light up. Although you can kind of see them in the daytime, but anyway, it's a lovely idea, and I was looking forward to doing it before I remembered I don't speak any Ukrainian. But seriously, go to Lviv anyway, it is a beautiful city, there's a statue of someone's belly, and you can visit the Lviv coffee mine, where a nice man will set fire to your drinks. And yes, I said coffee mine. It's best just to go with it. Water, star, bill, nipple. There have been many great gates, but this might just be my favourite of the lot. Yorkshire has a reputation for good play and common sense, which doesn't explain why York has a street called Whitma Whatma Gate. It's also one of York's shortest streets, a fact that has annoyed cartographers for about 500 years. Now, there are many good reasons you might choose a hotel, like its location, the price, or the facilities. And of course, sometimes you ignore all of that and choose a hotel because it looks like this. The Intel Hotel in Zandam is based on traditional houses from the Zan region. Many of the originals are still standing and can be found in the local area. The blue one can even be found in a painting by Claude Monet. Over to Scotland now, and you can barely move for castles around here, but even for Scotland, this is a good one. Dunotta is straight out of a medieval fantasy film, but it's real. Sitting on a rocky outcrop with a sheer 50 metre drop to the ways below, it would be difficult to pick a better defensive location. And in fact, this is where the Scots hid their crown jewels the last time they got invaded by those annoying neighbours of theirs. Next up is the kind of scenery that's quite common in China, India, Sri Lanka or Kenya, but this is Europe, or just about anyway. The islands of the Azores are one of the very few places in this part of the world with the right soil and climate for growing tea, and the Chargoriana plantation, in operation since 1883, is the oldest in the continent. Word of warning though, it is of course absolutely full of British people buying souvenirs. Now, knowing the kind of people who watch my videos, half of you have probably already been to Miniature Wonderland in Hamburg, so how about going to the second biggest model railway in the world? This is the Grand Marquette Rassia in St. Petersburg, where you can see a miniature version of Russia. And Russia is a big place, so even the miniature version is huge, with two floors filled with hundreds of model trains, cars, planes and boats. Like Hamburg, it is genuinely a work of art. And speaking of works of art, Elgin is a historic town in Murrayshire, Scotland, and formerly a cathedral city until 1560 when Scotland abandoned Catholicism and therefore abandoned this cathedral, which has gradually been turning into a ruin ever since. The centre of Elgin is full of elegant 19th century buildings. And also, the Dandy Lion, part lion, part mermaid and part hipster, one local councillor called the artwork Cultural and Intellectual Vomit. Whatever you think about it, the dandelion is clearly not too worried if he doesn't fit in with what everyone else is doing. And I kind of respect him for that. And finally, if you ever find that normal restaurants are getting a bit boring for you, then how about eating on a former offshore platform? The REM Island started life as a pirate broadcasting station in the 1960s, and it was anchored six miles off the Dutch coast, transmitting radio and TV to the mainland for 40 years, until it was eventually decommissioned and dismantled. But in 2011, the company bought it and rebuilt it here in Amsterdam, where it now provides office space and a slightly overpriced restaurant with great views of the port and the city. And that's it for today. Obviously, this list is in no particular order and it's not supposed to be a top eight or anything like that. It's literally just eight quirky places that I went to on my travels last year that didn't make it into one of my videos at the time, but now they have. While I was digging through my old footage, I did find a couple of things that I might be able to turn into full videos, and the longer lockdown goes on, the more possible that will become. So until then, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.